Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 320. And we are continuing with our lesson title, Classroom in the Heavens, which will be part 3. We want to focus again on the gathering. Scripture indicates the gathering will be an imposition of the Father which divides all that is in and of Christ from all that is not. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are in earth, even in him. So this is a continuing uh, phase of separation on the part of the Lord. It will be an eternal separa separation which will begin to divide all things that are of God from all things that are not of God. And the division, of course, incorporates the entirety of the secondary creation, the earth matrix, <coughs> the subterranean, the hidden sea, all that is pertaining to Christ, it is related to Christ, has a relationship in Christ, and those that do not. Where we are now is a prelude to the time in which the separation will begin, will be instituted. Of course, it starts at the time of the beginning of sorrows. Help me to understand one point, and I may mm -hmm. be too early in the lesson to be asking this, so let me know if you want to move it further down. The <clears throat> foolish virgins who miss the connection so they're not connected with all of the categories that you've just described are yet still fed and nurtured by the Holy Spirit from the, the heavens up until the time of the beginning of sorrows remember the midnight hour is the time their lights go out let me tell you why I'm thinking this mm -hmm. She ends up in the wilderness region. Who? The female aspect of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Having given birth, so we're yeah. well past the beginning of sorrows. She's given birth to the protagonists of this stage. They've uh, become adopted. Are you talking about the virgins, the ten virgins? The ten virgins, the, the ten, not the ten virgins, the five virgins who represent the, the remnant still on the, on the planet uh -huh. are in the tribulation, aren't they? No. Okay. Where no. do we see them? No, the last that you see of them is at the rapture. So they make the rapture. They miss the rapture, but the tribulation doesn't start immediately at that point. Okay. It's some point down. Well, you're going to have this coalescence. Remember, when the restrainer is taken away, evil comes in. There's a transition point until you begin to enter into what is actually the tribulation period. What you are describing is a cutoff point well, in which evil is allowed to now have its form. But there's a transition from that point. It has to coalesce before it can exhi exhibit the fullness of its influence. Are you saying then that the <coughs> foolish virgins come up between the rapture and the fullness of, not the fullness, the coalescing point of the tribulation, tribulation period? Yes. They come up. Well, they don't come up. They are basically cut off at the midnight hour. When the separation takes place, 
The lights go out because darkness is beginning to descend. At that point, this is where the separation is taking place. That we're, we're, we're looking at the rapture. Okay. Let me come back to the point. Maybe we're talking across purposes here. Okay. They, the five mm. foolish virgins, right. are shut out. Matthew 25, verse 12. Right. That's the rapture. Yes. Okay. So clearly, they are not taken up into the heavens at that point. Exactly. At that point, we see the, what you're calling, the building up of the tribulation. Yes. Not the heavyweight tribulation, just the building up of yes. it. Okay. Yes. Okay. We know that those five are not taken up in that period of time. Yes. We also know that the Holy Spirit, the female aspect, is nurturing the remnant on the planet. Yes. They, the five I'm referring to, are still the remnant on the planet. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why are we using the language the connection they they are not part of the connection because they have the Holy Spirit in them at that point. Yeah, but they've been cut off. Nobody's connected. I know you not. We have no relationship. So even though there's no relationship, the female aspect of the Holy Spirit is still nurturing and feeding them. Yes, the female the the, okay. the, 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 the woman <coughs> understand when you read Revelation the 12th chapter she flees immediately after the rapture yes. in the wilderness yes. she is not doing what she is going to do later on okay All she's right. fleeing she can't okay. Okay. Right. what's happening is that the cons consolidation of the Luciferian reality is taking place right. at the second half of the tribulation period where she is taken with the wings of an eagle and she's going to another place that's when <clears throat> the dragon is cast out of heaven and comes down to earth that's when she nurtures the remnant okay. what is the remnant those that have repented those that have repented yes. at, the, at the time of the, the the five foolish virgins them repented they've just been cut off okay so at the point then mm -hmm. um what you what did you just mention? Revelation 12, 12 verses 5 through 7, Somewhere something, around something there, in yeah. that area. Mm -hmm. At that point, the woman comes into her own in terms of nurturing. She's no longer running. She is nurturing the remnant on the planet. At the last part of Revelation 12, the first part, she's running. Okay. The last part, right. the dragon is cast out, they're told to rejoice. Now she's nurturing the remnant that keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. Are members of that remnant the five of the four? Yes. Five? Okay, so we yes. agree on, on, on that point. Yes. At that yes. point, can they be said to be connected? Yes, to the woman. Only, but they don't still they still don't have a relationship with you know, Jesus Christ. He continues no. to the only way you get a relationship with Jesus okay, you you, you, you to get repent, into the yeah. you're established. Right. But there's still a separation. Okay. You got to die. Didn't get into that, but okay. Now I'm understanding it. it. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for explaining that. No problem. Okay. <clears throat> so we see <clears throat> Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10, is talking about the time, the initiation of the separation between everything in Christ and everything outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, everything that's light is separated from everything that's dark. At the beginning of the separation. Okay, okay. Roughly how long do you think that period of time is before the tribulation, the way that you described it, the build up happens? What kind of period of time? Okay, what we're just talking about here <clears throat> at the gathering, from the gathering to the rapture is the time in which <coughs> at the rapture everything is separated. Right. At the gathering you have a partial separation which is continuing. The last thing that's separated are the churches that missed the rapture. Okay, I agree with everything you've said. The period of time between the rapture and the kick in of the tribulation, because you said there's a small period of time yes. in between. How long is that small period of time in between? We're going to go into that. Okay. You can have an estimation of your own okay. as, as, we, as we look at that. Yes. The left behind, when they finally do get accepted, mm -hmm. okay, no possessions and no treasures. Yeah, they do. It depends on what part, what period they become martyrs. 
if they repent and they have a certain time period to build up treasures and possessions, yes. If they don't, no. So it's all up to them. The sooner they repent, the better a chance they have before they get martyred. <coughs> We're going to take a look at that as we go along. Now, Scripture indicates the rapture is the final phase. It separates those of light from those of darkness. Revelation 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of, out of the separation, mm -hmm. out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. This is light being separated from the darkness. The darkness now covers the earth. The separation is taking place at this time. The Lord has said, to whoever it is left behind, I know you're not. We don't have a relationship. You have the Holy Spirit in you, but that's it. that's as far as it's going to go. You're dependent upon the Holy Spirit to guide you from this point on. That's interesting. They have the Holy Spirit, the earnest, mm -hmm. just the earnest. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Holy Spirit. But they don't have any Jesus. Well, when you say don't have any Jesus. They don't have a relationship. Well, yeah, in a sense of being and You could say that too. Don't have the Holy Spirit connected to them. Separated. Mm -hmm. what, what's in them is all that they have. When the rapture takes place, the Holy Spirit departs. Because John sees him at the throne in his fullness. Seven mm -hmm. spirits before the throne. It's like a diver, a hard hat diver, gets his air hose cut off. But what has he got? He's got whatever air he's got left, and that's what he's gonna that's his life. The source is now severed. He ain't got nothing beyond that. Until he repents. When he repents, what does that mean? That means he's now reached a stage where he is totally committed. Mm. Total commitment means you're not going to brook any nonsense from your human nature anymore. Amen. Amen. You're going to put that down and you're going to mortify it and you're going to be totally yielded to the spirit in you. Amen. Which will lead and guide to the point where pssst, you get martyred. Yes. So, literally, they're not going to get oil from somebody else, or are they? Are they are they're seeking? They're going around? to the source. All that that symbolizes it. Go to them that, that sell. Go to the source inside. Okay, inside. So literally, that can happen in an instant. Change, you repent, and then now all of a sudden you repent, you're accepted. Because of the intent is what you told us on yes. Sunday. Yes. So what we're understanding here is. <coughs> The moment the age of grace ends, death is required of the person to be in the heavens. That's you're, huge. Because you're, a, you're a under huge, the law. The people uh -huh. that are hearing this at home, I, I don't believe they completely grasp that fact. Mm -hmm. No. No. We're going to go into some things yes. dealing with this as we go along. So what happens here? <clears throat> Revelation 5 9 is the final severance that coalesces light from darkness. Those that are in light are in light perpetually. Those that are in darkness are in darkness. It's like the chasm in Abraham's bosom. You can't cross from one to the other now. If you don't have the Spirit in you, that's it. You're not going to get it because the Spirit's gone. People talk about getting saved during the tribulation period. No, you don't. Either you have the Spirit in you, that's why you have the grace period. For everybody 
who have can, available to get the Spirit in them because when this thing goes down, who is going to preach? You're in the middle of the Luciferian society. Who is access to the Word of God? Nobody. So how will they know if there's nobody to preach to them? Sure. They're going to be in ignorance. <clears throat> and in that respect, turn to, we're going to come back with turn to Revelation 13. Verse 8. Revelation 13, verse 8. And all, A-L-L, all, that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Everybody on the face of the earth is going to worship him who does not have the Holy Spirit in him. And the only ones that have the Holy Spirit in them are the ones that received it during the grace period. It's the only time you can get it. Because we just said, the Holy Spirit leaves. The gospel is going to be heard, pre preached from heaven by angels, but that's as far as it goes. Yes. I want to hear it come out of your mouth again. <laughs> me too, because of the grace period threw me off of it. So, okay. No, well, thank so you. nobody's you getting saved during the tribulation period? No. Because the method of salvation isn't there. That's why this period is called grace. Right. It's grace because the Holy Spirit is given. He started on the day of Pentecost to fill people with his presence. But if you want to wait around for another shot, you can be martyred and then... You have to, but you have to literally pay. <coughs> Wages of sin is death. You have to pay for your own sins. Yeah, the commitment <laughs> costs you your life. Here in the age of grace, people can slide around because God is gracious. Yeah. But they're not going to get away with that after the rapture. That, that door is closed. Let's go on. Uh, plus. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a seal to what I've been saying. Turn to John, the Gospel of John, first chapter. John. John, First chapter, Gospel of John, first chapter. Starting in verse 11, we're going to read down to verse 13. John 1, 11 to 13. He came unto his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. This is how you get saved which were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but the will of God. God recreates you supernaturally, and baptizes you into the body of Christ. After the rapture, God is not going to be around to do that. Mr. Jones, in my life, I've accepted Christ, you know, hundreds of times, and I've gone and I've, I've said the words. Someday I said the words. I got saved again Sunday. <laughs> so now, am I just blowing hot wind? Is there something to what I'm doing? Do I feel guilty that I, I'm not convinced that uh, he's, 
you know, it's all sealed. No. Jonesy, I literally spoke the words out the same way we are being led. So I, mm -hmm. ju I just followed along, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even want to say it was the Holy Spirit telling me to do it because it was just me following along, not being contrary to what was happening is, is probably what I'm trying to say. I just didn't want to be, oh, I don't need that. You know, I already got it. You know, I just I went I went along with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and But I'm feeling guilty now that I, you know, <laughs> like, you know what am I doing? I'm, I've already got it. Do I doubt that? You just speak accordingly. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I wasn't going to, wanted to, to, to speak out was there can be nothing detrimental to speaking out those words. And I think that we experience a joy in doing it again and again. And again. It's not that you need it, it's you, you, you've already got it. But experiencing that, in my mind at least, is, is, is joyous. You know what? What you told me I did, literally, I was ingratiating, I was showing my Lord and Savior how much I appreciated Him by once again vocalizing the words. Yourself and telling me. Amen. I do the same thing but with one <clears throat> slight deviation. When He says <clears throat> and say this, Lord I know I'm a sinner. I say Lord I know I was a sinner. Amen. I come to you now uh, asking that you come into my life. I thank you Lord for coming into my life. I just Re, 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 reconfigure it to what I am, okay. but I'm still saying the prayer as it's being elucidated. I think, I think I'm still at the stage where I'm more than happy to, to admit that I'm still a sinner. I try not to be, but no, I am. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. When you say that, you're saying you're doubting what God's done to you. No, I don't want to do that. No, you're a son. Full, but You don't even identify that anymore. So okay. when you're talking about sin, it's past tense. Doesn't mean we don't sin, but there's a difference between sinning and being a sinner. Okay. Sin means you experience certain things where you slip right. into the flesh. But the scripture tells us when we're committed to Christ, immediately the blood takes care of that, washes it away. Amen. It is a habit of sin that makes a person That's what a sinner. You're talking about. Okay. There are no glorified <coughs> sinners. Yeah. <laughs> so I've still got a little bit of time. <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, <clears throat> scripture teaches, from that point on, all that is in Christ in the heavens, in the earth's matrix regions, and its neither regions will experience the glorious realities imparted to them from the Father through the Prototokos sons. At that point, the connection is made. Everything in Christ is now unified. Wherever you are. And in that point, everybody is going to know what's taking place because everybody will have access to observed activities in the heavens at the throne of God. Turn to Revelation. You're in the fifth chapter. We want verse 13. Revelation 5, verse 13. <coughs> everybody living, pardon me, sorry, but everybody living on the earth will see the heavens and what is going on. Ultimately, but at this point, only those that are in Christ. When you say on the earth, we're not talking about the surface world because the surface world is now under the control of Satan and the heavens block off because everything is in darkness. There are matrix areas in the earth, subterranean areas in the earth where God has non-human races that are connected to Him now in Christ. The They're going to see. The different folds or whatever. Yes. They're going to see as we read this passage of Scripture. Revelation 5, verse 13. In every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power 
be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. So it's talking about all that is on the earth's matrix. Remember there are dimensions on the surface world. Jesus went into them to escape the tribes and the Pharisees who were trying to stone him. There are regions, parallel regions, that you can enter into and come out of. Those are compartments where you have people that are Christ's. You have subterranean regions, the neither regions. Those that are comforted in the regions that drink water. They're connected to Christ. You have regions in the heavens, the lower heavens and the higher heavens. They're connected to Christ. They have all been separated from the darkness regions. The Luciferians don't have any hold on them at this time. But coming back to a question, can any of those people that you've described in Christ look up and see in the heavens the sun, the fire? They all can. So, so it doesn't matter where they are we're just in ready. Christ. I just want to make sure we're understanding the same question. Just they can look up and see. They can look up and see. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's no because they're no, in a different reality. Yeah. yeah. But the Father, because he's connected them, Sure. has made sure that everybody knows what's going on. So a person who is not in Christ, standing right next to Dara, for example, can look up the same way they, she's they looking, have see no, nothing. No, not at all. No, 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 no They're outside the spirit. Right. They've got no way to connect. So they would, they would think that she's, she's just crazy. <laughs> the only <laughs> way that's going to happen, I'll tell you when that's going to happen. Right. Turn to Revelation 6 chapter. Starting in verse 13, this is when those in the darkness region see what those that are in the light region have seen before. Okay. Revelation 6 chapter, starting in verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as the fig tree cast its our untimely figs, which he is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him yes. that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For that great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Now they see what the other people could see in Revelation, the fifth chapter. But at this point, it's all hidden from them because they're in darkness. Mm. They're separated. Yes? When the judgment is going to be pronounced, mm -hmm. the Lord appears in the cloud, mm -hmm. in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Who sees them? Depends on which judgment. There's several of them. If you're talking Jeremiah about 2530. everybody sees them. Everybody, everybody hears them. Yeah. But he's not appearing at that time. He's, he's pronouncing it from the throne. But that's every human, isn't it? Because that judgment is for humans at that point. So yes. if uh, a non-human being happened to be walking around, that non-human being wouldn't hear or see the judgment. Is well, he right? might hear it, but it wouldn't be for him because it says against all the inhabitants of the earth. Okay. So it's been a pronounced judgment that if the individual that's intended to fall on is going to know it's for him. So hang on a second. Against all the inhabitants of the earth does not include, or does include, non-humans. No. It, it does include. It does not it include. It does not include. It does but not. they can hear it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But they're not going to hear it the same way that somebody who was committed in Christ would hear it. No. Right. No. No. Everybody's going to hear it as it applies to them. The individuals, because it talks about that, he's going to pronounce it, and then immediately things are going to happen. He's going to demonic incitation, nation against nation. That doesn't refer to non-humans. That's referring to the Adamic exactly. kingdom. Right. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm getting to is at what point does the non-human, who of course is not a nation against nation, recognize that a judgment is there for him? It's not until the tribulation, though. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're going to look at that God has a, he says, I have a controversy against the nations. Mm. He, at this point, is not at all happy with the human race. 
not at all. There are several judgments that are going to fall on the human race. They're engineered for the human race. Why? Because to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. And men have been ducking and dodging since the time of Abel. Uh, the, the reality of God been, been literally spitting in his face, shaking his fist at him and done everything they can to disparage God and God's people. He's not happy about that at all. The beginning of sorrows is just the beginning of his displeasure, as we will see. We've basically, this is just a preliminary, we've been trying to give you an understanding of the separation and how in the separation the destiny of the people in light is going to be radically different from the destiny of the people in darkness. The people in light, no matter where you are in God's creation, you're going to receive blessings, glory, peace, love, and joy. You're going to know what is going on because the prototokis are there to teach everybody who has been connected in Christ. Conversely, the separation of those in darkness is the commencement of the ire and the anger of God against the human race, as we will see very shortly. <clears throat> Principles, Scripture teaches, from that point on, the human race and later, 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 the Luciferians will begin to experience the horrors of torment which exist in the separated realities. Now, we see where it starts. Revelation 6, turn to Revelation 6, we want verses 1 to 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, <clears throat> and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. What is the significance of this? He has a bow, but there's no arrow in his bow. What does that mean? So he's conquering, but he's not conquering through war, destruction, weapons. How's he conquering? He's conquering through wealth distribution. What comes with wealth distribution? Equal. Exactly. Class. What comes with class? Egregious restrictions on the lower class. Oppression. Higher dominion on the higher classes. So this is talking about situations where wealth is being distributed around the world but at the hands of the Luciferians. Just like the wealthy now are gaining wealth at the expense of the middle class and the lower classes and they're pressing them. Same thing is going to happen here, but it'll be the humans <coughs> that are going to, they're going to bottom rung. They're going to experience a certain degree of wealth, but life is not going to be pleasant for them. They're going to be in a situation where they're conquered by wealth. That's what the word says. He goes for conquering and to conquer. Isn't this yes. the first Antichrist? Uh... This would be the condition okay. in so the time first, of the first Antichrist. Okay. So the king, the king represents a condition, or the king actually is? He's representing a condition. condition. Right. The which, condition is prosperity. Which brings about the rise of the person, is what I'm understanding from the picture. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's going to be a point at which 
everybody's going to be setting their heart on this wealth. Mm -hmm. Just like they do now. Very People right are now. still trying to live yeah. the American sure. dream. Sure. What is the American dream? It's an oppressive system run by bankers, industrialists, corporate magnates, warmongers, with um, the uh, individual on in the lower rung getting the crumbs that these other people are allowing to fall. Oh, I get my house. I got my car. Well, you're paying through the nose to stay in your house. You're paying through the nose to stay in your car. Everything you have is a result of debt that you got into. They're being conquered by wealth. <coughs> anyway, let's continue on. Verse 2. <clears throat> and I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. Verse 3. <coughs> and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat thereon to take peace. So the word peace there is prosperity. So what the first white horse rider did <coughs> was to bring a condition prosperity <coughs> sorry my that's okay. <laughs> sorry. what the second rider did was to take prosperity away so he undoes what the first guy does the first guy brought a certain torment the second guy brings a different torment mm -hmm. take peace from the earth the day should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. sword. This is referring to war. Every time you see red and you see sword, it's, con it's, it's connoting war. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld a low, a black horse. He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, Measure wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, see the hurt not the oil and the wine. What does that mean? Famine. Now who is engineering these things? The elites. Exclusive here, right? No. Prototokus. Wait. Prototokus is initiating the balance? Sure. It's judgment. Oh yeah. It's judgment. And you see here. It says, go back to verse 1, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. Who gave him the crown? Prototokos. They're setting the stage for conditions on the earth. Why? Because the earth, the human race, is under judgment. God has separated <laughs> the light from the darkness. The light's being blessed. The darkness is being judged. Now, at the time that the protectors had given the crown to this one on the white horse, mm -hmm. how many chief beasts are in play from the Luciferians? All of them. You have the first half of the tribulation period. Okay, so basically everybody's up by that stage. But this is not falling on them. It's falling on the humans. Right. <coughs> uh... Verse 4, there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him. Who gave him the power? The there you go. That's it. They want to take. So this is designed to do what it does. To cause destruction. To cause torment on the human race. Now, since the father is the one who controls all things, you could describe this as a form of delusion, this, this strategy again. Sure. Because the humans don't know that this is the cause. Sure. Do they think that the people that they now serve, that they now bow down to, are the ones who are causing this? No. Do they think anything? They think what they're told. They can be told anything. They'll believe it. Sure. they got no objective comprehension. Yeah. Let's go on. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld in lo a black horse. He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, Measure wheat for a penny, 
Three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Who's the voice? Exactly. They're engineering all these judgments. Why? Because this is the will of the Father. All things have been given into the hands of the Son, who give them into the hands of his brethren, who are engineering conditions on the earth that the Father has taken his people out of, separated them from, None of this is going to affect them in the least. It's going to fall on the recalcitrant, rebellious, stiff-necked human race that's been rejecting him for thousands of years. In verse 5, he that sat on the black horse and had the balances, is that representative of justice? Uh, no. It's representative of the ability of produce. Scale is, the, is, is a device for measuring out substances. Okay. In this is talking about lack. You're parceling out. The voice says a measure of wheat for a penny. So you put on the scale, this is all that's going to be made available to right. these people. And you reserve the, 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 the oil and the wine for God's people at the end of the tribulation period. Let's go on. <clears throat> Now we come to another form of form of of uh, judgment, affliction that's going to come on the human race. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, "Come and see!" And I beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth the fourth part of the earth is referring to the fourth part of the human race is under judgment so should we understand that up to that point the beasts of the earth had not turned against humanity right so what we call wild animals today will become even worse at that point yes indeed because wild animals have a fear of man. These won't. And notice what it goes on to say. Power was given unto them, death and hell, over the fourth part of the... So the fourth of the human race is now uh, going to be eliminated through death and hell. in different ways. To kill with sword, that's war. With hunger, that's starvation. With death, that's different ways that people are going to die. Falling from a building, get run over by a car, uh, robbed and beat to death. Th these are two beings. They are overlords of two vast regions of the, the interior of the earth. Hades and the death region. They're allowed to come to the, to the surface now to claim souls. This is a judgment on the human race. And they are going to torment a quarter, we're talking about billions of people, of the human race. This isn't going to happen in one night. This is spread over a long period of time. People are going to be scared to <coughs> death to come outside, scared to death in their beds, terrorized by these two beings. You say, well, how do you know? Because the Bible tells us. Turn to Isaiah. Isaiah 28. 
Okay. Thank Starting you. verse 14. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 20, 14. Okay. It says, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So everybody, whether in Israel or any other side of the world, are going to be tormented by these two entities. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scores shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. We have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So they make a deal with these two. <clears throat> what happens is they come down, and they sweep over the earth, wiping out everything in sight either through war, famine, pestilence, or death through different ways. And a quarter of the human race has succumbed to this by this time. So in Jerusalem, they meet with these two beings, death and hell, and they make a covenant, a proposition with them, an agreement. And they are confident in their agreement. And the Lord, this is uh, this is uh, what, this is uh, Elohim, is saying, "Oh, you made an agreement with them, so you think you're safe." When they come back again, they're going to sweep over us, but they're not going to do anything to us. They're going to wipe out everybody else beside us because we got an agreement with them. He says, "Oh, you think so?" <coughs> and he goes on. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. <clears throat> so what he's talking about, of course, is the new covenant in Christ. He says, you reject that, but you're going to accept this lie, this tissue of fabrication. You're going to pin your hopes on this, are you? And he goes on, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. So he's saying here, I'm going to make, I'm going to put things in motion here, that's going to make your covenant <coughs> look like what it is—a tissue of lies. I'm going to send them back, and they're going to sweep over. They're not going to sweep over and miss you. They're going to start with you, Jerusalem. And make your life miserable. Verse 18. Your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. For the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Ye shall be trodden down by it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to wipe you out. Now this covenant that they make with death and hell. This covenant when the beasts makes his appearance, he's going to broaden it. They misinterpret Daniel when it talks about he establishes the covenant. It doesn't say that. It never says that. It says, basically, he strengthens the covenant with many. What does that mean? It means the covenant that Israel made with death and hell, when the beast comes along, he's going to bring other nations into it. They're all going to think that they're protected. When uh, death and hell sweep over the earth, everybody under this covenant is going to be safe. They wipe their brow. Oh, we're good. Uh, um, Syria over there, Greece, they're not in the covenant. They, they, they're going to get wiped out, but we won't. That's the covenant that the, that the, that the beast, or the, it starts with the Antichrist, establishes with uh, or strengthens with other nations that are brought into our relationship, an agreement that Israel initiated with death and hell. So it's not just Israel who has this covenant? It starts with Israel. Okay. How far does it, how wide does it go? It goes, I doesn't say how many, but the inference is it's going to be a Brexit. Confirms. All these guys are going to get in there. The least, in other words. Yeah. Confirms with many. Yes. The whole thing is a tissue of lies. The Lord says, I'm going to make all you guys regret that you ever even entered into this thing because it's going to trodden you and it's going to wipe you flat. Then 
you're going to see the only covenant that really matters is the covenant mm. in the blood of my son. So that point is that woe is me, oh I wish. Why did I do well, that? Well, they'll realize that just before the second coming and they'll cry out to him. Right. He said, he told them before he got crucified, he says, I'm not coming back to visit you until you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the oh, Lord. Yeah. You're going to have to call upon me before I come back and uh, protect you. So your house is desolate. It's from the point of him establishing his ministry all the way through to the second coming. No, his, his house is desolate is when they rejected him. When he started his ministry. No, when they, when they ended his ministry. Okay. Two thousand years ago. Right. Yeah, right. just so before. Year or two, but right. the, the the time period because yeah. they put the mouth on themselves. That was their covenant with yes. death when they rejected. No, that when, was the covenant they, with Rome. When they said that blood be upon us and our children. That, that was. Right. That was the crucifixion. Okay. Death and hell didn't have anything to do with it. Right. It was the human sin and covenant. Right. What well, they what well, they did. When they, Which they did because they thought they'd have the protection of Rome. Pontius Pilate and uh, the Romans would protect them at the expense of turning over the Lord Jesus. They sold him out. Uh, uh, they were protected for something like 30 years and then the, 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 the armies of Titus came in and leveled the whole so thing. So that's basically what the people are, the Luciferian, all these people are turning away from God they're doing right now. Yeah. Same thing. Yes. Being repeated all over. Yes. The Satan doesn't change. It's a deception, 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 deception. But let's go on. Turn to Revelation 6, verse 9 to 11. Revelation. Scripture indicates because of the tormenting conditions released on the earth, many will repent and commit to Christ and become martyrs. When these judgments fall, <clears throat> a lot of people are going to come to their senses and realize what time it is, and they're going to turn to the Lord. Revelation 6, verse 9 to 11. When he had opened the fifth seal, <coughs> I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So when these judgments begin to fall, people begin to see the light and they commit to Christ. They are rounded up, brought before kings and rulers of the Luciferian <clears throat> uh, authority figures and they stand there and they testify. Number one, they state their testimony. Yes, I've accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. I'm committed to Him. I'm ready to die for Him. Your kingdom, your time is going to be limited. The kingdom of God is going to crush you and smash you. Away with them. Take them down there and wipe them out is what ultimately happened. So this is what he's saying. When he had opened the fifth seal, I, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, the question arises, why are they under the altar? Why aren't they at the, th at the, at the, uh, or, uh, the, at the altar or before standing somewhere before the altar. It's because they don't have a covering. They don't have robes. Notice what it goes on to say. They cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. It was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. What does that mean? That means that these guys were going through their life cycle activities at the time that the judgments began to fall. They missed the rapture. 
they're totally committed to whatever earthly lifestyle they had. And they had their heels dug in. They weren't about to change until these egregious, tormenting judgments starts falling all around them. And they see the hideous creatures that started coming up out of the subterranean regions, out of the skies. They see the tormenting conditions and they realize this is God. And they realize what their destiny is, hell. So they realize what they need to do. They turn, they accept the Lord, they convert, in other words, they repent, and they are reinstated. They're not connected, but they're reinstated. They're rounded up, and they stand there, and they speak their testimony. Now, they have not had any opportunity to receive robes of righteousness. They had robes of righteousness. They wiped them out. They spotted them. They uh, uh, totally uh, destroyed them by their lifestyle. <clears throat> so they're martyred, killed. Their souls come up, but they can't come up before God. They have to have a protection. The altar covers them until they're given white robes. Then they can come out and then they can stand before the Lord in righteousness. What does this mean? It means they have no position, they have no influence at this point, because they haven't had time to establish anything. So there's another group who the Father says, wait there for a while, acclimate to the heavens. Does this group also lack that understanding of how the heavens operate? All of them do. Nobody knows anything. anything. Sure. Who taught them? They've rejected everything. They haven't had time to read the scripture or prepare themselves. They've been victims of their circumstances, going after Luciferian illusions until they're caught up with the realization, the reality of, oh my God, I'm in mortal danger. If I die here, I'm going directly into the torment regions of hell. So that point of acclamation is true for everybody it's, uh, in the, who comes through the tribulation, isn't it? Yes. So it's not, it's, a, I was, I used to think, well, I now understand, I used to think it was peculiar to that particular group, but I see that that's not the case at all. No, what happens is once they repent, then some have more time than others to make it right, to establish a place for themselves. This happens basically, <clears throat> I believe at the beginning of the tribulation period. Then you have a midpoint of the tribulation period called the Great Tribulation, where turn over to Revelation seven and you read about them there. Yeah, Revelation seven. They're called the Great Multitude. Nine. Yeah, starting in verse nine. <coughs> After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. These have white robes. Why? Because they repented. They had time to establish a record for themselves of works and things that would enable them to receive rewards. So that's what we're calling the acclamation. Yes. That's called acclamation. Yes. No, no, I'm calling it acclamation. It doesn't say it. Yeah. Um, they acclimated themselves, they prepared themselves for when they got into heaven, they would have a place right, a position. in which they could receive rewards and positions. The other group didn't. Mm -hmm. They got killed too soon. <clears throat> so it goes on, white robes, palms in their hands, and cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Now drop down to verse 13. One of the elders answering, answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. He said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white, in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. He that sit on the throne shall dwell among them. And then later on He's going to lead them into experiences 
in eternity. But you have two groups at this point. You have a, a group that basically comes up with nothing and then a time period continues and the second group comes up with robes. All this through the tribulation period. All this because the judgment is being poured out on the human race. And then basically when you get to um, Revelation uh, 6 uh, verse 13 the, the judgments are going to now be poured out on the Luciferians. We'll get to that at another time.